Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got another more premium laptop to take a look at today. This one from Lenovo. This is their ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 5. And this one has been out for a while, but we're at that time of the year where we're starting to see prices come down on these models to make way for some of the new ones that are coming out a little later in the year. And you might be able to get this at a decent price versus what it was selling at recently. So what I thought I would do is step through this laptop and what it's all about. And I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this starts at around $1,800 or so and goes up from there. At the moment on Lenovo's website, you can build this one to order and spec it out the way you want. This one as configured sells for about $2,600. Inside it has an i7-2700H processor. This one has an NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU with six gigabytes of video RAM. And notable is that it runs at 95 watts. This is closer to what we typically see on a gaming laptop versus a regular laptop. But you'll note as we go through the review a little bit that it will throttle that GPU down a little bit due to temperature, but it's still a bit higher than what you might see on a 55 watt configuration. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD on board. You can upgrade the RAM and the storage, both are accessible inside. This model, because it has the beefier NVIDIA GPU, only has one storage slot, but some configurations have two storage slots. The cooling system on this one prevented that second slot from being available. It has a really nice display. This is a 16 inch 4K display, but it's in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So it runs at 3840 by 2400. It is an IPS display, so you've got decent viewing angles on it. And the contrast ratio is very nice actually for a non OLED display. This is Adobe certified. It is also X-Rite uh, calibrated, uh, so it should be good for creative work in particular. And it runs at 60 hertz at up to 600 nits. So it's pretty bright and it looks really, really nice, especially uh, given that we've got the scaling operating here to really make those pixels look sharp on this one. Now for media watching, this does support HDR10 and Dolby Vision, so apps like Netflix will be able to take advantage of the display's high dynamic range if you want to do that. So pretty good for creativity, but also for media consumption. It's not all that heavy for its size. It comes in at just over four pounds or 1.88 kilograms. It is made out of carbon fiber and magnesium. Although you'll notice that there's some fingerprints already appearing on the unit here. It is very much prone to collecting fingerprints based on its composition. And I don't like to clean things up before we review them. So this is what it looks like after a week or two of steady usage. But I will say its overall design here feels very much like a ThinkPad. It's got a nice solid feel. The components they're using to construct it are very rigid even though they are lightweight. The display, as you can see here, is very well balanced. It lifts up without taking the keyboard with it. And overall, you're getting a very nice hardware design for the money. One of the nice things that you'll get on the 4K display options is that they have a carbon fiber uh, weave here on the top of the display that looks and feels really, really nice. So overall, from a build quality perspective, uh, it is surprisingly lightweight for its size and very well constructed. It also feels a lot like a ThinkPad when it comes to the keyboard. This is a backlit keyboard, just one color, of course, and you get your tracking nub here along with the trackpad and the physical buttons. There's also a fingerprint reader up here, and its camera will also do facial recognition. One thing that some ThinkPad purists may not be happy about, though, is the key travel. This is running at a 1.5 millimeter travel. So that's a little more shallow than some of the older ThinkPads might be. And I know a lot of people really like that really deep travel keyboards that we see on some of the ThinkPads, but not all of them. But for me, it definitely feels deeper than a lot of other laptops out there. And the typing experience was very nice on it, along with the trackpad and track point. Now you do get a number of ports on board. It has two Thunderbolt 4 ports here on the side. And these are full service ports that can send video out, power in, and of course data devices in and out. One thing to note though is that you can't deliver enough power over Thunderbolt 
to make the laptop run at its top performance. So you will need to use the included 230 watt power supply here to get the most out of it. And this is the same power supply you'll see them deliver with some of their Legion gaming laptops. So be sure to keep that power supply with you when you're traveling, but you can run it uh, off the Thunderbolt if you have to, but it's gonna max out at around 100 watts there. You have an HDMI output here along with a headphone microphone jack. On the other side, you've got two USB-A ports along with a Kensington lock slot, and you have a full-size SD card reader here as well. The SD card reader, though, will have half of the card sticking out when you stick it in, so you're not gonna be walking around with the card on board, but it's good for quickly offloading camera footage when you're out in the field. Now, like other Lenovo laptops, the webcam here at the top has a shutter mechanism to block the lens, a physical shutter. The video quality isn't bad out of it. It shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second, so it should be more than adequate for Zoom and other conferencing calls that you might be on, so that was good. The speakers are pretty nice on this too. They don't have a lot of bass to them, but they are upward firing with a good range of sound. They don't sound tinny, and one of the advantages of having a larger laptop is that you can fit larger speakers in them. So the sound quality here is a lot better than what you might get out of a smaller unit. But for music, I would still recommend attaching up a pair of headphones. Battery life on this though isn't great, and that's to be expected with a high performance machine like this. So if you keep the brightness down and stick to the bare minimum, you could probably squeeze about six or six and a half hours out of it. But if you turn that GPU on and start doing more intensive tasks like gaming and video editing and photo editing and all the other things this machine is designed for, you're looking at significantly less battery life. And that's just par for the course with one of these high performance machines. So you're gonna wanna keep that power supply uh, close at hand because this is really not designed for all day battery life, but you could squeeze through a good chunk of the workday if you're not doing anything too strenuous when you are disconnected from power. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. I think it goes without saying that this is going to do a great job at the basics like web browsing, as you can see here with its Wi-Fi 6 radio on board. Uh, everything you might do on the web is certainly going to be very snappy and responsive. We also had very good results playing back video from YouTube and Netflix and other places. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 254, which is right in the margin of error with other i7 chips from this generation. But to get the most out of it, you'll definitely wanna keep that power supply attached and make sure you have your Windows power and battery settings set for best performance. That will get you the most out of the GPU. And I have DaVinci Resolve loaded up here with a 4K 60 frames per second video project. And right now it seems to be working pretty nicely as expected because this does take advantage of that NVIDIA GPU. I just dropped on a transition here. And as you can see, that was a pretty smooth transition even in real time. Some of these do take a little bit of rendering to do based on the display quality I have it at right now. But Overall, I think this machine is very well suited for things like video and photo editing. And it can also do a pretty good job at live video production. Although for that task, I would probably look at a gaming laptop that has a more robust cooling mechanism. As you'll see in a minute, this will throttle down a bit. And if you're stressing the GPU out over a long duration, you might see some performance disparities over long periods of time. So let's take a look at some games now. We've got Fortnite here running at 3840 by 2400, the native resolution of the display. Here at medium settings, we were getting between 50 and 80 frames per second, although mostly above 60 frames per second, with a burst or two at 100 frames per second, depending on what was going on in the game. Here is Doom Eternal, also native resolution, at ultra settings, we were able to squeeze about 35 to 50 frames per second out of that game. And this is Red Dead Redemption 2. We did have a little bit of trouble getting it to run full screen. And we also ran it at a slightly lower resolution, 2560 by 2048 at the lowest quality settings, just because we wanted to see where the sweet spot was for getting close to 60 frames per second. And at that setting, we were getting between 50 and 55 frames per second. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 7,138. The 3060 inside performed about where we expected it to perform versus some of the other laptops we've looked at with this GPU inside of it. But you will note that the CPU performance on here is a little better than some of the other ones on the list, primarily because this is a newer 12th generation chip that has more processor cores available to it. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 90.5%. 
that is below the passing grade of 97%. And so what that indicates is that when this machine is placed under heavy sustained load, you will see a slight drop in performance in order to keep things from overheating. And that's not an uncommon problem on some of these business-oriented laptops. We've seen it on other brands' laptops, and we've seen it on other ThinkPads like this one. So if you want that more consistent performance, you'll need a larger gaming laptop that does have a more robust cooling mechanism. But for the kinds of things that I think this machine is designed for, like video and photo editing, which tend to be a little burstier in their performance needs, I think you'll get good, consistent performance out of that GPU. Only when you place it under load will things start to tail off a bit. We also noted there was a good amount of fan noise on this one, very similar to some of those gaming laptops, because the fan will work really, really hard to try to keep everything cool, and there's no way to avoid the fan noise when you're doing that. Typically, it's not coming on that often, like when it's sitting here on the desktop or on a web page. But once that CPU or GPU starts going, you're going to hear that fan kick on. Although there are some settings to turn down the fan noise, but that, of course, comes at the expense of performance. Now, we also booted up Ubuntu to see how well it can do with Linux. And it was able to detect all of the hardware properly. That includes the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, the audio, the GPU got detected. You do have to install some additional drivers for that. And the performance overall here has felt pretty good as I've been moving around a little bit throughout the Ubuntu operating system here. So if you were looking to run things other than Windows, I think you should have a pretty good experience. The one caveat I will give you on this, though, is that the webcam seems to be running at half its normal frame rate versus what we saw on Windows. So it did detect the webcam, but I wasn't getting the full frame rate out of it, so you might need to uh, get in touch with Lenovo about that. But overall, from a Linux perspective here, it looks like it is performing pretty well. And on the whole here, this is another nice ThinkPad, a little more of a premium price on it, but you do get a lot of the performance that you might expect out of a gaming laptop in something that looks to be more business friendly and is probably going to be a little lighter uh, than a gaming laptop might be. You do have a little bit of performance degradation when it's under load, but beyond that, I was very pleased with its performance and its look and feel, especially if you are a fan of that traditional ThinkPad feel. You're going to get a lot of that with this one. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.